Hi, this is Ms. Delosier, and these are your notes on macromolecules. So the first thing we need to talk about is what a biological macromolecule is, um, and there are four types. So they are carbohydrates, um, lipids or fats, proteins, and nucleic acids. And so we're going to go ahead and we're going to talk a little bit about the basic um, concept of macromolecules and, and how they're used in biology and then we're going to break those four types into separate videos. So um, I do want to talk about the fact that these carbohydrates, proteins, and nucleic acids are all what we call polymers, whereas lipids are not polymers. Um, and that's important to remember. We've talked quite a bit about polymers and monomers in class. So a polymer is simply a long molecule that's made of similar or identical subunits, um, uh, which we call monomers. Uh, so monomer, let's define that. So I've got my, my, um, my, basically it's like a string of beads. So if I have a string of beads, the beads can be different colors, they can be different sizes, but they're all strung together in one long chain. Um, and each of those is going to be held together by a covalent bond. And that's pretty important when we're talking about the biological molecules that, that they're being held together by covalent bonds. Each of those beads, though, is going to be a monomer. So that's just going to be a building block or an individual subunit. And so that would just be the individual beads before I connect them. And that's really all we're talking about, a string of beads versus loose beads. Um, that's polymer versus monomer. And so that's true for carbs, proteins, and nucleic acids. So let's talk about um, how we actually bond them together. Because I've got these monomers and they're not covalently bonded to each other and I need to somehow make them into the polymers which are covalently bonded to each other. So I'm going to build or break down my macromolecules through one of two processes. And these should be familiar to you from chemistry. The first um, that we're going to cover is dehydration synthesis. Dehydration synthesis. Synthesis means I'm building um, and I'm building by removing water specifically. So I'm going to take a monomer and then I'm going to take another monomer. And if you look at these monomers, when we're looking at these, um, these uh, biological molecules, it's very common to have a hydroxide group, an OH, and then a hydrogen on uh, an opposite side. So the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to remove the hydroxide from one monomer and then I'm going to remove the, um, the hydroxyl group from one monomer and then the hydrogen from another. So I'm going to take those two and that's going to form HOH, which um, for those of you paying attention is water, and that's going to give me uh, two monomers that need to form a bond. So they're going to bond to each other plus HOH. So that's my water and there is the covalent bond that I've formed and that's dehydration synthesis. The opposite of that would be adding water to break it down. That's hydrolysis, breaking down with water. Hydrolysis, break down with water. Um, so I'm going to take my monomers, put them together into my polymer that's held together by my covalent bond, and then I'm going to add in some water. And so I've got my polymer, I've got my water, and what's going to happen is that polymer is going to have that HOH go in and it's going to break that bond. I'm going to get a hydroxyl group on one and the hydrogen on the other. So that hydroxide goes and forms the hydroxyl. The, um, the hydrogen goes and attaches to um, normally a carbon, but not always. It could be a nitrogen. And I am going to get my individual monomers back out. So I've got my two monomers. Now this happens um, over and over and over again. So I could be talking about adding two monomers together. I could be talking about adding two monomers together and then individually adding like another 50 monomers. So I could have a chain of 51. Or I could be breaking down the whole chain. And these are the basic chemical reactions that we're going to be talking about throughout the entire um, school year. So it's really important that you understand these two processes. Um, if you're having any issues, go ahead and send me an email or come in during tutorials and I'll be happy to help.